I mean, there are some places where you can say yes or no, but don't say yes or no to every single question, okay? That's, that, wouldn't be, that wouldn't be very good. But that's what that is. There are a series of questions, and that's what you will be doing. Again, any questions or... Um, okay, we're, we'll take a break in just a little bit. We'll be finished with this section, so... Um, Okay, so these are the three sections that you saw, introductory section, financial section, and statistical section of the CAFR, as we call it. Instead of comprehensive annual financial report, we'll call it CAFR. <coughs> and these are the parts, you know, again, you'll be spending a lot time on this, the title page, the content page, the letter of transmittal, which is the letter written by the CFO or the head of the organization, to the reader of the financial statements uh, and anything else that the management desires itself. <clears throat> this is the more important part, the financial section itself. They're all important, but, oops, but this is, so you have an auditor's report which says whether the, believe it or not, it will tell you if the audit opinion is qualified, unqualified. You want to look at the federal government audit opinion? Let's do that for a moment because I want you to see something. Okay, so this is the United States financial report. This is a very long report. And boy, these numbers are some pretty mighty big numbers here, okay? But what we're going to do is the United States uh, report is actually audited by the GAO, Government Accountability Office, okay? This is their audit opinion to the President, the President of the Senate, the Speaker of the House of Representatives. And it goes on and on, but this is what i like you to read. <coughs> I don't know if you can read this. Would you believe this? That's our government. That's the opinion on the federal government financial. And this goes on and on. This is, I'm just giving you, look at some of the other things, material weaknesses. And guess who the Department of Defense Look at the bottom. DOD, however, has consistently been unable to receive an audit opinion in its financial statements. They've never had a, they've never had a clean opinion. So this is serious stuff. Yeah. Yes, you know what? That is a good point. You said there are certain but the controls and how the, you don't have to list the program. You don't have to list it because everything is still shown as an expenditure of the federal government. You just bury it somewhere in some part of an organization. But that's not, the, here the problem is with, with controls and material internal control weaknesses in the system itself. But I wanted to show you this because this is the world's largest financial reporting entity. And they have some terrific people who are working there trying to get things done right. And they work very hard. In fact, the federal standards are much more stringent than state strand standards are. But because of the amount of money that's spent and how it's spent, we have this type of an issue. Okay, well, we'll go back to The other interesting thing is, and we'll ta spend uh, one chapter on this, which is uh, on the audit. Uh, what you'll find is that um, when you think of audit, who does the audits, by the way? Mostly it's what your audit firms, like. 
But in New Jersey, in many states, it's, there is no external audit firm. We have some, we have uh, the state auditor. And let me just uh, very quickly explain this. You might say, what does it mean? If it's the state auditor, how could they be objective in, in the financial statements, looking at the financial statements of the state itself? Because the state auditors are accountable to the New Jersey legislature. You know we have the three branches of government, right? Judiciary, legislative, and then the executive branch. So the legislative branch, which is represented by the state auditor, audits the executive branch so they can be independent. In fact, the former state auditor of the state teaches in our program, uh, the public sector auditing class. And uh, you know, there's always that question. MDNA, basic financial statements, which we'll look at. But this is the core financial section that's found uh, in these statements. MDNA brief objective narrative providing, again, we looked at this in chapter nine. It talks about things that have occurred. What's the purpose of MDNA? Very simply, if you don't know how to read the financial statements, where do you go? MDNA, because what does it do? It describes things in a, hopefully in a layman's, in layman's terms, right? So it will tell you, you know, we ran short of cash, we should have gotten this, we didn't. These are revenues last year, this is what it is today. So it describes it in more, much more layman's uh, language. These are the two sets of financial statements, government-wide financial statements and fund financial statements. And then we have the statistical section, which shows our 10-year history of both financial and socioeconomic information, which is kind of a nice thing to have just so you can see how things are um, progressing. Now, I will not spend a lot of time on this because we are not going to be really uh, doing this. Uh, but just like state governments, we also have US government-wide financial statements. And then each of the departments has its own statements. So the, each department has its own, and then there's a consolidated statement for the U.S. government itself. Okay. Who are the players? It's the U.S. Treasury, the Office of Management and Budget, and the GAO, which is the Government Accountability Office. Those are the three players in federal financial reporting. And this is what I was telling you, management and data deficiency. Uh, there's one interesting thing. There's a plain language citizen guide, which kind of explains things and uh, much better than the MDNA does. Because an MDNA is not something where you can put in anything you want. MDNA has to follow certain rules. It's not a PR piece. But a plain language citizen guide can be structured uh, so that it's easier to read. There's also something called a performance and accountability report. And uh, just one quick point here. Um, what kind of information do you have in a financial report? Financial, money-wise, and non-financial, right? Those two types of information, especially in governments, you want to know non-financial. What are you getting back in return? At the state level, states are not required to present non-financial information that's required of the federal government. They present some non-financial, but really not, um, uh, not as much. The federal government does it more, and it does it through this thing called performance and accountability report. You know, if you get a chance, what you should do is, there is a statement of social insurance and the federal debt statement that I just showed you, the report. And it's interesting because it talks about the gap in the Social Security Fund. And it might be of interest to you because this is way, looking way ahead to see what's going to be happening to Medicare and Social Security. And that's presented in those financial statements. And that's what that is really talking about. 
you know, tax burden, tax gap, and challenges in the future. Okay, we're nearly there. Um, Not-for-profit organization, um, again, we'll be spending a lot of time on this, and I talked to you a little bit about what the primary purpose is to provide information to the donors, members, and creditors, and how that uh, those resources are used, and whether they can uh, they will continue to provide those types of services. By the way, we'll go again into these are the statements that are required of not-for-profit organization. We'll talk more about this. Statement of financial position, which is a balance sheet. Statement of activities, which is the income statement. A cash flow and statement of functional expenses for only certain types of organization. Again, I talked to you about this donor imposed restrictions. Um, I want to show you something. This is, these are financial statements from American Heart Association. This is a not-for-profit entity, right? Take a look at how their statements look. There's the opinion. Can you read this up on the top? Unrestricted, temporarily restricted, and permanently restricted. And this is going to be the subject of when we talk about, about not-for-profit organizations. What that means is, if you give a donation to a charity, and you tell them you can spend it any way you want, what is it? Unrestricted, right? <laughs> okay, now you give a are you with me? Okay. No. Next to you. Neighbor. Yes. Okay. And you give a donation to a charity and you tell them, look, I'm giving you money now, but you can use it only next year. Is there any kind of restriction? Yes. But what is it? A temporary restriction, right? To time. What's a permanent restriction? Okay. I will give you money. But you know what? You can only use the interest from that money. It's what? Permanently restricted with income coming to you, right? So that's how they define, and that's why you see these different things. Again, we'll talk about this when we talk, when we look at this. Okay, so uh, since you were 